This annual game can feature neighbor against neighbor, friend versus friend, cousin against cousin. It is Auburn, Alabama, Army, Navy, Duke, North Carolina on the high school level. In 2009, Baylor began a string of four straight victories over Macaulay. That 2009 win snapped an 11-game win streak for the Blue Tornado in the series. Macaulay is eager to get back in the win column in the series. The Red Raiders hope to keep their streak alive. It's Macaulay and Baylor. Once again, good evening. We are expecting anywhere from 8 to 10,000 fans tonight. And it's a home game for Macaulay. And the Blue Tornado chooses to play this game at Finley Stadium downtown every other year to accommodate as many fans from both schools as possible. Finley Stadium is home to the Chattanooga Mox football team and was home to the NCAA Division I-AA football national championship game from 1997 to 2009. Macaulay enters the contest, winners of two straight, defeating Tyner and Father Ryan at home. Baylor has lost two in a row, falling to Brentwood Academy at home and Ensworth on the road. It's a great night for football here at Finley Stadium in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. We are almost ready for kickoff between Macaulay and Baylor. Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jeff Romero along with Travis Uzzle bringing you tonight's game between the Macaulay Blue Tornado and the Baylor Red Raiders, a rivalry that Sports Illustrated called the top high school rivalry in the state of Tennessee. The captains are on the field preparing for the coin toss. Uh, Macaulay is using its seniors as captains tonight. Only nine seniors on the Macaulay roster. Captains for Baylor tonight. 32, Sean Wampler. 15, Bryce Reynolds. Russell Burton. And number 16, that is Colton Jumper. Four captains for Baylor. Once again, we are at Finley Stadium in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. We are not at Spear Stadium on the campus of Macaulay School. Finley Stadium seats 20,668, and this game has been played here for several years to accommodate both schools for tailgating purposes, reunions, and greater fan participation. Being the home team, Macaulay is wearing the blue and the, the Macaulay fans are on the home side of the field, which is the south, south side of the field. Baylor wearing all white uniforms with red numerals and red socks, silver helmets on the north or visitor's side of the field. Baylor won the toss and has elected to defer until the second half. And McCauley will receive. Baylor will kick from the east end zone. And we are almost ready for football here at Finley Stadium. Tonight's game is the game of the week for several media outlets here in the area and it is televised as the Tyner game was two weeks ago. It is televised by this TV, Channel 9, a WTVC Channel 9 production here in Chattanooga. And uh, with, with that, we will get the TV timeouts like we did a couple weeks ago. So the game will move a little slower than you're used to in terms of timeouts on the field. But we will hopefully move things along and provide you with information and statistics tonight. Baylor enters the game with a three and two record, one and two in the region. Baylor's lost two in a row, as we said. They started the season with wins over Saudi Daisy, Bradley Central, and Father Ryan. 
before losing to Montgomery Bell Academy and Ensworth. McCauley on a two-game win streak, starting off the year with two losses, a tough schedule at McMinn County, who only has one loss on the year, and then two-time defending champion Ensworth the second week of the season, losing 47-10. to Ensworth has beaten both Baylor and McCauley by similar scores, beating Baylor 42-17 to and McCauley 47-10. to Last week, McCauley took its first trip to Nashville for a region game at Father Ryan and came back with a 31-21 victory in a game that really wasn't as close as the score indicates. Chad Tolliver had a whale of a game in that game. It was a one-man wrecking crew on the offense for McCauley. Scored two touchdowns, ran for 156 yards, and also had a 97-yard kickoff return. Teams are on the field. And Baylor is set to kick as Rafael Gaglione, number 10, for Baylor with the neon green soccer shoes is set to kick off from the 40-yard line. Deep for the Blue Tornado, Chad Tolliver on our left, and C.J. Fritz on the right. And here we go. Ball is to Tolliver from the seven. He's got some blockers in front. He is at the 25. Spins around and he's knocked down at the 27. So McCauley will start their first possession at their own 37 yard line. First and 10 as we start the first offensive series of the game. Quarterbacking at McCauley tonight, the junior number nine. That is Nelson Johnston. And McCauley in their traditional triple option offense. Has two receivers to the left, now one in motion, one to the right. The give is Johnston on the keeper across the 30. Good yardage to the 34-yard line. Brought down that time for Baylor. By number 25, that is Russell Burton. Baylor, a very senior heavy team, especially on defense. Nine seniors on defense for Baylor on the starting defensive lineup. McCauley only has nine seniors for the whole team. Second down and about three. There's a flag on the play. Second down and three after a seven yard gain for Johnston. And there is a penalty on the flag, and it's offsides on Baylor. So the first break of the game and the first first down. Both going to McCauley. Offsides on Baylor. The ball touching the 40, first and 10 from McCauley's 40. Game just underway. The give is to Trotter, and he's across the 45. Nice play that time. Another gain of about six or seven. Looks like it's going to be seven for 32, Alex Trotter. Tackle for Baylor, number 20, Blake Lane. Gain of seven for Trotter. So two seven-yard rush, rushes to start the game for McCauley, nearing the midfield stripe. This time he's back to pass. Intended for Zach Hobbs. It is complete for a first down, Zach, across the Baylor 45 into Baylor territory for a first down. Johnston connecting on his first pass. That's a gain of nine. Johnston to Hobbs. And a first down again for McCauley. Into Baylor territory. Baylor playing a 3-4 defense with the linebackers about five yards back. Here's a quick pitch around the left side to Trotter, who follows a nice block and looks like he has enough for a first down. Trotter takes the quick pitch across the left end, crosses the 40, 
and is being marked down at the Baylor 32-yard line. A gain of 12 for Trotter. First down. Whistle on the play. That is the third first down for the Blue Tornado. Flag on the play. And it's going to be a legal procedure against, against McCauley. That will knock him back about five yards. Crowd, crowd still filing in here at Finley Stadium. Both sides of the field expected to have excellent representation by their fan bases. So first and 15 for McCauley. Johnston on the keeper, and the pitch is to Trotter, who has good blocking on the right, down at the 25. Nice block that time by Eric Wolf to spring Trotter for a nice, probably a 10, 11 yard gain for Trotter. Chad Tolliver has yet to get the carry. And that is a gain of 11 for Trotter. Second down and about three for McCauley. That 11 yard gain on first down after the penalty. And McCauley picking up right where they left off on offense. Last week at Father Ryan, pass is complete from Johnston to Samir Usman for another first down. Usman coming out of the backfield and catching the ball down at the 12, first down. For McCauley. That was for 12 yards. First down at the 12. The give is up the middle this time. And that is Chad Tolliver for his first carry. Tolliver had a lot of success last week at Father Ryan going between the tackles at Father Ryan. And coming home with 156 yards against that Irish defense. Same play to the right side this time. This time he has stood up, hit hard that time. See if we can get that number for you. One of the linebackers, a little talking going off, gone after the play there. Might need binoculars for this one here. Look like 21, Mike Davis on the nice hit there for Tolliver. Looks like there's a stoppage in play here. Is it going to measure for the first down? It was third and five, and it looks like he got four or five, and he's going to be really close to the marker there. Tolliver's first carry is a first down. So five yards for Tolliver. And McCauley marching from their own 27 to start this game inside the five-yard line of Baylor. Knocking on the door at the two-yard line. Ball touching the two-yard line here. First and goal to go. Tolliver behind Johnston. Johnston in the shotgun. With Usman and Trotter. Flanked to either side. The give is to Tolliver Johnston. Oh. Give was to Tolliver. Touchdown, McCauley. McCauley on the board first. Chad Tolliver reaches the end zone for the Blue Tornado. And McCauley very impressive on their opening drive as Tolliver reaches from two yards out. And McCauley on the board. Here comes the kick from Peter Phillips. Snap was high. It's down and the kick is good. So McCauley on the board with a two-yard touchdown run. A nice drive of 73 yards to open the game, and McCauley leading 7-0, 8-12 on the first quarter clock. Haven't changed it on the scoreboard yet. It says six, but kick was good. I'll look to my, well. Oh, the kick was no good. From my, from my view, it looked good. It looked like they signaled good. The kick was no good, so the snap was high. So 6-0 after one 
offensive series. McCauley leading. Again, that, that drive, nine plays, 73 yards, three minutes and 40 seconds off the clock. And McCauley leading 6-0. So Tolliver, who leads McCauley in rushing this year with 525 yards, averaging 131.2 yards per game and has scored, that was his ninth touchdown on the year. Almost used as, as a decoy in the, on that series as uh, McCauley running the option, but going, choosing to go around the ends instead of between the tackles like they have so successfully the last two weeks. McCauley's kickoff team on the field right now. Peter Phillips also handling the kicking duties for McCauley. Deep for Baylor. As we said, wearing white pants, white shirts, silver helmets with the red B on it. And there's the whistle. And the kick. And it's going to go to the left deep back, that is number six. Goes around the right side, still, still on his feet. Finally slung out of bounds. Six tackled by six. Landry Taylor on the run, brought out of bounds that time by C.J. Fritz. And this will be our first look at the Canadian quarterback, Michael O'Connor. running out from the sideline to run the Baylor offense. Junior, he's 6'6", 201 pounds. And he is, like I said, was playing football in Canada. Somebody saw him on a trip up there and uh, got him interested in Baylor, came down, liked what he saw, and here he is. First and 10 from the 27. The first play is a pass, and he is sacked. Driven hard, and there is a flag on the play, Samir Usman. Driving him to the turf. O'Connor throwing the ball away. Could be, it could be a intentional grounding on O'Connor. Let's see what referee indicates. Yes, intentional grounding, which would be a loss of down for Baylor. So Usman, from his linebacker spot, got in through the cracks and nailed Michael O'Connor. A big stage for O'Connor coming from Canada. I'm not sure if he's played in front of this many people this season. This is his sixth game of the season. And O'Connor has been platooning at quarterback with sophomore Nick Tiano, number 14. O'Connor actually left the game last week at Ensworth with an injury, but looks to be fine tonight. So Connor in the shotgun, George Porter to his left at running back. Back to pass, a lot of time, and pass is intended for Joey Rogers, incomplete on the right side. On the coverage for McCauley, Justin Dennis. So it's a third down, big third down play as, McCauley, as Baylor is backed up at their own 11 yard line. Have to get all the way to the 38 for a first down. Third and 27. This time Porter to O'Connor's right. Shotgun play. Back to pass. The rush is on. Cam Walker had him in his sights, and the pass is complete. Nice pass that time. Brought down by Eric Wolf. Pass is complete to the 35 of Baylor. That is Jeffrey Bowens for a pickup of about 22 yards, 23 yards, but not quite enough for Baylor and they are forced to punt. Punting tonight for Baylor. 87, Ian Jump will stand on his own 20, deep for McCauley. Chad Tolliver standing at his own 35. Snap is good, here's the left-footed kick is off the side of his foot, bounces at McCauley's 40, takes a nice Baylor roll. And McCauley is going to set up shop at about its own 23-yard line. Nice punt that time for 
jump, 43 yards on that punt. McCauley first and 10 leading this game, 6-0, 6 6.58 to go in the first quarter. Crowd still filing in on both sides. And here we go, first down and 10 for McCauley from its own 22-yard line. They give that time to Tolliver, who squeezes his way past the 25. Brought down by Baylor's number 55, Derek Green. Experienced defense for Baylor with nine seniors. McCauley's offense... Four seniors on the offensive line and two seniors on the wing. Second down and f six, a gain of four that time. Usman on the carry, and he's got first down yardage, and he's still on his feet. No whistle yet, still on his feet. Finally wrestled down. Well, no, they did mark him down, but it was first down yardage, so from the 26 to the 34, Gain of eight for Usman, his first carry. McCauley with six first downs thus far in the game. Ball at the 34. Johnston looking to pass. Oh, and that was, uh, had a little gasp in my breath there because the pass was over Eric Wolf's head. Incatchable, and he took a big hit from Mike Davis from his safety position, knocking Wolf, who had jumped for the ball, knocking him to the turf with a hard thud. He's coming out of the game. I think he's okay. Second down. That's Johnston's first pass in completion. First down pass that time. Second down. Ball at the 34 of McCauley. Johnston on the keeper this time, and he stood up right at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten one yard. They're going to give him one yard, so it's going to be third and nine. Option keeper for Johnston. 538, 37, clock ticking here in the first quarter. Against Once again, we are at Finley Stadium here in downtown Chattanooga. Jeff Romero, Travis Uzzle bringing you tonight's game. Thank you for joining us tonight. Johnston back to pass, looking caught by Eric Wolf at the 50. Nice zip on that ball from Johnston, the junior quarterback. Looks to be enough for a first down. No flags on the play. It's a gain of about 15 yards to Eric Wolf. So hurt or uh, knocked down on the previous play, but they go back right, right back to him for a nice gain of 13 yards and a first down. Johnston on the keeper that time across the 45. Hit hard, spun around, but after a gain of six or seven, good read that time by Nelson Johnston. Johnston, three for four passing for 34 yards thus far here in the first quarter, and that was a gain of about six for Johnston. It's going to be second and four. This time the option give is to Trotter. He finds some daylight, and he is across the 40 and driven down at the 35, a gain of about seven or eight for Alex Trotter. Trotter pick of, of about eight. And another first down, that is the eighth first down for McCauley. Give to Trotter up the middle. At, actually at right tackle. Colton Jumper, the senior linebacker, makes that tackle. Solo tackle for Jumper. After a gain of about four. It's only Trotter's third carry of the game. Hobbs split out to the right. 
Wolf in the slot on the right side. This time Johnston back to pass. Has a wide open receiver. That is, that is, couldn't see the number right away, but it is uh, Spencer Morgan. Nice grab and nice zip on the ball tonight from, from Nelson Johnston. Gain of 12 as Mike Davis brings him down after the catch. Johnston really looking sharp with his passes tonight. 12 yard gain. And an, another first down for McCauley. The give is to Tolliver. He's up the middle. He's got some space at the 10. Looking for a block from Hobbs around at the five. Brought down at the one yard line. Chad Tolliver, once he gets through that first line of the defense, he is hard to stop. Nice job that time by one of the safeties for Baylor as he fought off the block from Hobbs and stopped Tolliver from getting into the end zone. But it's another first down for McCauley this time. Tolliver has the handoff at right guard, and he's in for the touchdown. Touchdown, McCauley. Two possessions, two touchdowns. McCauley likely going for two points here. Clock at 316, so McCauley's second touchdown coming at 316, striking quickly tonight. Offensive coordinator Mike Newman doing a good job of calling these plays. And the blue crowd right below us loving what they're seeing so far. A lot of alumni here in town for both schools. McCauley going for two points. Looking to pass. Two-point conversion is, they give it to him. It's good. It's that nice tackle as Tolliver caught the ball out of the backfield. Nice tackle that time by Landry Taylor, but the ball had crossed the plane of the goal, so McCauley adds to its lead, and now 14-0. 14-0, 3-16 remaining in the first quarter. So two touchdown carries for Tolliver. That was a one-yard touchdown run for McCauley with the two-point conversion. McCauley leading 14 to nothing. Once again, McCauley on the short end of a four-game losing streak to their crosstown rivals, Baylor, the Baylor School. Both schools with day students and boarding students. Baylor has boys and girls. McCauley just an all-boys school. Friendly rivalry, but uh, they are a rivalry in everything. Great atmosphere tonight. McCauley School using the Finley Stadium video board here at Finley Stadium and uh, really adding to the atmosphere tonight. A lot of McCauley produced videos and instant replays. And of course, uh, the game, uh, the score in McCauley's favor is not hurting things at all here tonight. 14-0, 316 left to go in the first quarter as TV says we are ready to kick off. This time the kick is a short one, caught at the 15. Up to the 30, still on his feet, across the 35. Good field position before he is brought down by Asa Peoples. Nice return that time. For Wampler of Baylor, and Baylor's second possession starts at the 38, Baylor's own 38. O'Connor still in at quarterback. Tall, tall kid and high snap. This time it's a give to Porter, and he is hit hard after short game by Tanner Winters. Pickup of about five for Porter. That's his first carry. So second and five for Baylor, still looking for its first first down of the game. 238, 236 clock running. Now uh, O'Connor 
under center and falls. There's a fumble on the play as he pitches it. I'm sure you can see that on your monitor, but he was, looks like he tripped over either his own feet or his center's feet and still tried to pitch it to the trailing back, which I believe was Porter. Lucky for Baylor, one of the linemen fell on the ball. Trey Foshi getting credit for the fumble recovery for the Red Raiders. And this brings up a third and third and 13, loss of eight on that play. Third and 13 passing situation for Baylor. O'Connor back in the shotgun. Two to the left, one to the right. Looking across the middle, and that is caught by Bowens at across the 50. Pretty pass out. And Baylor fans have something to cheer about as it took a while to get Bowens down. So let's see if I can pick up the gain on that play, 26 yards. As O'Connor, a good looking passer. 26 yard completion to Bowens that time. O'Connor two for three for 49 yards. And Baylor in McCauley territory at the 39 of McCauley. The give is to Porter at the left side, met immediately by Julian Nunley. And that was a perfect form tackle. If they could get that on video and show students of the game that that was a perfect tackle by Julian Nunley. No gain for Porter. And second and 10 for the Red Raiders as O'Connor is under center this time. Receiver to either side. Fake hand off to Porter. He's got plenty of time. Now he chooses to run across the 40 at the 35 and spins around to the 33. A gain of about seven, six or seven for O'Connor. We haven't mentioned Reggie Upshaw's name yet. He is the highly touted senior receiver and basketball player for Baylor. One of the top 10, top 12 players in the city according to the Chattanooga Times Free Press. He has already committed to play basketball for Middle Tennessee State. And there's zeros on the clock as the first quarter comes to an end with Baylor driving. So it's going to be third and four after that six-yard gain by the quarterback, Michael Connor. Baylor with one first down on offense. McCauley with ten first downs in the first quarter. More importantly, McCauley leading 14 to nothing. After one quarter, McCauley leading 14 to nothing. And Nelson Johnston, the junior quarterback, running this offense so far to perfection. Once again, we are at Finley Stadium in downtown Chattanooga. Beautiful night for football as the sun has just gone behind the mountains to our left. Nice skyline of Chattanooga straight ahead of us here. It's nice to be where we are tonight as we are near Trey Tucker and the stat crew tonight. So I'm able to be a little more accurate in my statistics than I am normally. Nice round of applause for Macaulay's 10 National Merit semifinalists just announced over the PA system tonight. Hank Bramlett, the normal PA announcer for Macaulay home games at Spears Stadium, also doing the honors here tonight at Finley. A lot of tailgating going on beforehand, and a lot of, like we said, a lot of classes in town for their reunions tonight. We welcome those of you who couldn't make it to their reunions, but are who are listening or watching on your computers. Thanks for joining us tonight, as it is third and four. Pass 
complete this time. It is two on the left side. Enough for a first down. It looks like it's four. That is Joey Rogers. Quick out from O'Connor to Rogers. And that is a pickup of 20 yards and good for a first down for Baylor. So ball inside the 14 now, first and 10. Got to call it the 13. O'Connor seems to be finding his groove here in the uh, on this series. Another pass, this time out of the backfield with the tight end. And that is complete to Chandler Gauger, Gauger, excuse me, Gauger. Nice tackle that time for McCauley by Justin Dennis from his cornerback spot. Gain of three, second and seven. Baylor knocking on the door here, ball touching the 10 yard line. Second and seven. The give is to the first back through on the left side and he is in for the touchdown. Taylor Maxey at left tackle finds the end zone for Baylor. 10.59 on the clock. Baylor cutting into the McCauley lead here. As a cannon fires or something fired over there on the Baylor side after that touchdown. Officially an 11 yard touchdown for Baylor and Gaglione on to kick for the extra point. The holder is O'Connor. And this kick is good. So 14-7, McCauley leading, 10-59 of the second quarter. And that was an 11 yard run for Maxi. Fourteen to seven. McCauley on top. Ten to fifty-nine remaining in the second quarter. I'd like to say hello to our friends listening at the Atlanta Alumni Chapter, having a viewing party tonight at the home of Robert and Lindsey Sanders, class of ninety-nine. Also, hello and a special Macaulay hello to the New York City alumni chapter. Hoping you all are enjoying the game up in New York City tonight. Thank you for getting together tonight and enjoying tonight's game. Jeff Romero joining you tonight with Travis Uzzle and Trey Tucker, John Green, helping with statistics tonight as Baylor has just scored their first touchdown of the game and cut into McCauley's lead, 14 to seven. Here's the kickoff as Tolliver watches it sail over his head and that ball is downed, or is unreturnable as it goes into the end zone. So this will be McCauley's worst field position of the game to this point. Third series for McCauley starting at their own 20. That last drive for Baylor, 62 yards. Last scoring drive, 62 yards. This time the give is to Tolliver as he has stood up before a loss. Tackle by Blake Lane. As Tolliver could not spin away and reach the edge that time. Nice containment by the Baylor defense. Loss of one for Tolliver. Johnston back to pass again, intended for Hobbs, and there's a flag on the play as the ball was thrown in Hobbs' direction across the 40. Looks like number 43, Josh Smith, senior corner on that side on the on Baylor's right side. Looks like there was interference, and that is the call. So 
Interference on Baylor. It's going to be an automatic first down for McCauley. And that improves McCauley's field position. Let's see where they mark it. Up to the 35-yard line of McCauley. A gain of 15 on that penalty. And McCauley in double digits tonight already in first downs. So an incomplete pass goes for a gain of 15 on that pass interference play. Johnston on the keeper, and he pitches it. I think that's Trotter for a seven or eight yard gain as he was in the grasp of somebody, still able to get that ball out on the edge for Trotter. Trotter picks up eight. Trotter near of rushing tonight. 46 yards on five carries as there is an injury on the play. One of the Baylor players down on the turf. Number 15 for the Red Raiders. That is Bryce Reynolds. And he has to come out of the game. Ten oh four here in the second quarter. McCauley leading fourteen to seven. As McCauley has scored on its first two possessions of offense, Baylor has had three possessions scoring on its third possession. Each McCauley with two touchdowns, Baylor with one. 14-7, 10 minutes. Clock is running. Second quarter. Give is to Tolliver, and Baylor had that one snuffed out as he is met almost immediately by Colton Jumper. And he fails to gain a yard. So a third down and two coming up for McCauley. No gain for Tolliver, who has not been able to get, lo get loose yet. Looks like there's some confusion on the McCau McCauley, McCauley huddle as Tolliver comes off the field now. Third and two. Trotter in motion to the right. And the give is to Usman. And he forces his way forward across the 45 for a gain of about four. It looks like that's enough for a first down. There is a flag on the play. Offensive tackle Casey Cook indicating he thinks it's against Baylor. But his, his opinion does not count. So third down and two, and that rush gained four yards. It's going to be a personal foul on Baylor, so they're going to tack on some yardage there. So we'll give Usman a gain of four. And the referees are going to help McCauley out by marching this penalty, or this spotting this ball all the way to the Baylor 38-yard line. McCauley in blue, all blue uniforms with white stripes down the pants. Nelson Johnston, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Back to pass, evades one tackler. Long pass intended, and be oh my gosh. Did he catch that? Beautiful catch. There's a flag, there is a flag on the play. Touchdown, signaled as a beautiful catch from Spencer Morgan. There is a flag on the play. And Baylor saying it's against McCauley. I don't think the McCauley sideline sees the penalty yet, but that was a, an absolutely beautiful throw and a beautiful reception by junior Spencer Morgan. Unfortunately, you won't see that on the highlights tonight on TV because uh, the penalty is going to bring that one back. I didn't see he was on the coverage, but uh, it was a great coverage, but Spencer Morgan timed his leap and just wanted that one a little more than the Baylor defender. Would have been a touchdown. It was signaled a touchdown by the officials. And after a long Baylor penalty, McCauley is going to be penalized. Didn't see the, here comes the call from the referee holding on McCauley. So marching McCauley back 10 yards, back to the 50. And it's going to be second and 20. Actually, it looks like second and 22 from where they marked it, ball on the 50. They have to get to the 28, so uh, second and, uh, excuse me, first and 22. 
Johnston on the keeper around the right side, across the 40, and he picks up a nice chunk of yards there, about a 15-yard gain. Beautiful read on the option that time by Johnston, who stuck it in the gut of Tolliver. Obviously, the defense keen on Tolliver tonight. Johnston picks up about 16 yards. It's Nelson Johnston. Very impressive tonight for McCauley here through one and a half quarters. Back to pass again, this time intended for Winters again, or excuse me, Spencer Morgan. A little behind the receiver on the left side, incomplete. Third and about five, a long five for the Blue Tornado. Baylor fans across the way trying to make some noise, encouraging their defense. Third and five for McCauley. Have not had any trouble picking up first downs tonight. Back to pass again is Johnston. Quick screen to Morgan, who has some room, but he's gonna be he's gonna be knocked down behind the line by Houston Clements. He bobbled the ball, which threw him off stride a little bit. And that play lost yardage. Loss of about three. Pass was complete, but didn't lose yardage. And McCauley will punt. Charlie Lindemann on to punt, standing at his 50. Nice high punt. It's going to hopefully pin Baylor between the 10 and the goal line. Does take a nice McCauley roll, still rolling. And McCauley falls on it at the five yard line. So about a 30 yard punt for Charlie Lindemann as McCauley fails to score on that possession, but that is the first time in this game that they haven't reached the end zone. And unfortunately for McCauley, they did reach the end zone on a beautiful pass from Johnston to Spencer Morgan. Unfortunately, that was called back by a holding call. So Baylor will take, take over on offense at the nine Yard line. 726 here in the second quarter. McCauley leading 14 to 7. As we have a TV timeout on the field. Baylor trying to get its offense going as McCauley has run 27 plays on the night. Baylor only 10 plays for 85 yards. McCauley nearing 200 yards of offense at 176. First down for Baylor. Michael O'Connor again, 6'6 in height, 201, a junior. And him and Tiano have alternated in all the games to this point, but it's all been all O'Connor tonight so far. Shotgun formation. The give is to the right back. And he's across. He has some running across the 20 at the 30. Flag on the play. Flag on the play brought down by Dennis for McCauley. And Baylor seems to know it's against them as they are marching backwards. But that was a 20-yard gain for Maxi. Maxi scored the touchdown earlier for Baylor. Baylor penalty is a hold on the Baylor offense. So marking it back. Well, it's still first and 10, marked it from the spot of the foul, apparently, for minus 10 yards. First and 10 from the nine.
Clock moving 7.02 here in the first quarter. Second, excuse me, first half, second quarter action. Nice tackle that time and give his two Maxi. Tackle by Usman. And Nunley, Us, excuse me, that was not Nunley, that was Kirsch Duncan in at tackle for McCauley. McCauley's defensive line has Cameron Walker, Duncan, and Jack Harris in on this series. O'Connor in the shotgun, high snap, back to pass, rushes on. Beautiful pass and complete at the Baylor 40. That's Bowens, he's at the 20, and he's gonna score. Beautiful touchdown for Baylor. That is from the 14-yard line. An 86-yard touchdown pass from O'Connor to Bowens. And Baylor has a chance to tie this one up as Bowens got behind the defense. Hauled it in at about the 45 and did the rest with his legs. That score coming at 6-10 of the second quarter, and this score is tied. Six ten, left before halftime. Beautiful pass from O'Connor to Bowens. And this score, this game is tied. 14-14, six minutes, ten seconds remaining. Here at halftime as Macaulay crowd a little stunned here. Baylor crowd across the way cheering. And we have a new ball game. Ninety-one yard drive that time. Striking quickly is Baylor, using only one minute and sixteen seconds on the clock. Score tied at 14 after that long pass play for the Baylor Red Raiders. Here's the kickoff. It's a deep one from Gaglione into the end zone. No chance to return it for McCauley. So McCauley will take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Six ten left in the second quarter. Score tied 14 all. Johnston at quarterback, Chad Tolliver behind him, the junior. Running the option offense to give us to Trotter around the right side, and he spins forward for a gain of about five, actually six. As he comes in motion and gets the handoff wall in motion and picks up six yards. Trotter. His sixth carry on the on the night, 51 yards for Trotter. This time Johnson keeps and pitches. It's Trotter again around the left side, and he's clear across the 40. Had one man to beat and driven out of bounds at the Baylor 44-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Colton Jumper. Nice block on the edge, Zach Hobbs clearing some space for Trotter. With a nice pickup. About 21 yards for Trotter. And this time nothing doing for Samir Usman as he is tackled for a loss by Russell Burton in the backfield. Loss of one for Usman. It'll be second and 11 for the Blue Tornado. 
in Baylor territory. Ball touching the C of the Chattanooga Mocs as we're playing in their home stadium tonight. Ball at the 47 of Baylor. And there's going to be a penalty on Eric Wolf as he could not hold his stance and fell forward for an illegal procedure penalty on the offense of McCauley. That five yard penalty will move McCauley back. It's going to be a second and 16. as the McCauley offense comes to the field. And McCauley might have called a timeout here. It looks like they have. No signal yet. Oh, they're waving the flag off. Okay, so they wave the flag off as McCauley saying they called a timeout before the flag was thrown. Four minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter, and we have a tie game, 14-14. Baylor beat McCauley 34-28 to last year. That game was played on the Baylor campus. Baylor leading 31-7 to at halftime, but was outscored 21-3 to in the second half. McCauley driving at the end of the game and really had a... Had a realistic chance to win win that game or at least tie it late in the game. Just didn't get it done, but uh, tail of two halves last, last season at Baylor for McCauley. As we said in the opener, Baylor with four straight wins in this series. McCauley winning 11 straight before that four game streak started. So McCauley's trying, trying to start a new winning streak in this series. Enter the game on a two game winning streak on the season with wins over Tyner and Father Ryan. Timeout is over and it is second down and 11. McCauley in Baylor territory. Johnston in the shotgun. Trotter to his right. Excuse me, Tolliver to his right. Fake to Trotter. Pitch to Trotter on the left side. Blocking, following the block of Spencer Morgan. Good yardage across the 40 for Trotter. Nice block on the edge by Spencer Morgan. Gain of about seven. Make it eight for Trotter. Had a busy night tonight. Nearly 100 yards on offense. Third down, big third down play for McCauley. Johnston on the keeper and the pitch to Trotter, who is tackled at right at the first down stick, right at the stick. Looks like he has to get to the 36 and the spot from where we're standing is, uh, looks a little short from here. Maybe by half a yard. Fourth down, they're not even gonna measure, so it's short a half a yard. Fourth and half a yard, and McCauley is gonna go for it. At least that's what they're indicating with their alignment. Johnson in the shotgun. And the give was to Tolliver, and it looks like he did get it. McCauley saying yes, Baylor saying no. From where we're standing, looks like a favorable spot. Looks like a one-yard gain for Tolliver, who went over right guard. And waiting for the indication. Well, yep, there it is. Signaling a first down is the head referee. So McCauley keeps possession. Ball at the 35 of Baylor. So one-yard pickup for Tolliver. First down and 10 for McCauley. Clock running 322 left in the second. Trying to break this tie. Johnston keeps around the left side. Takes a hit, but he's across the 30, nearing another first down. Brought down 
for Baylor by Bryce Reynolds and Jalen Simmons. But not after a nine yard gain for Johnston. Made the right decision on that option. Pulled the ball out of the belly and took it around left end for a nine yard gain. Clock running to 42 left before halftime. Second and one inside the 30. Tolliver on the give that time with both arms around the ball. Reaches the 25 yard line. That'll be a first down for McCauley. Short gain of two, but a first down. McCauley coaching coaches have to watch the clock now as clock will be will be moving under two minutes here shortly. Ball at the 25. Score tied at 14. Uh oh, bad pitch. I saw that coming. Bad pitch from Johnston to Trotter. And the ball was close to getting out of bounds, but Baylor falls on it. A good de job of defense by Baylor to force that pitch, but it was an errant pitch from Johnston to Trotter. It was behind him. And Baylor falls on the ball. First turnover of the game goes Baylor's way. So Baylor will take over with a chance to break this tie going in at halftime. 2.13 left on the clock. Ball at the 36. O'Connor in at shotgun. First and 10. And Baylor is going to use its first timeout. So first turn turnover of the game goes Baylor's way. A fumbled pitch, actually just a, a bad pitch from Johnston. Behind the runner running to his left and looked like the ball was gonna roll out of bounds near the McCauley sideline. But one of the Baylor defenders, I didn't catch the number, did a nice job of keeping that in bounds and maintaining or get, getting possession for his, his offense. So Baylor has a chance here with 2.13 to go in the second quarter to get an end zone or kick a field goal and take, take a lead into the halftime locker room. Once again, we are at Chattanooga's Finley Stadium, downtown Chattanooga. Great crowd on hand. My guess is about... 8,000 people. Unofficial guest to play back in action. The give is to Maxi, and he is met by three Macaulay defenders. The first hit from Samir Usman. Andrew Busby also on that tackle. One yard gain for Maxi. It's going to be second and nine. Still haven't heard from Reggie Upshaw. Actually, I believe he has one catch. He will be an all-state receiver this year. He is flanked out far to the left. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't go to him right here. Actually, they go the other way, and it's complete at the 50 from O'Connor to Gauger. Nice 14-yard pass from O'Connor to Gauger for a first down at the just across midfield. So it's going to be first and 10 for Baylor in McCauley territory, just over the 50-yard line. O'Connor with his 6'6 height able to look over the line and see his open receivers. Back to pass again. This time he is hit and leveled by Usman. And that's going to be a loss of five as he looked like he was running to the left side, but he was leveled by Usman, who's a good foot shorter than O'Connor. Clock is still running right at a minute now. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Four receivers spread for Baylor. Another rush from Usman, he's hit. As Connor took a good lick from, from Usman that time, I believe. Or is that, let's see if I can get that number for you. That is Usman. So he's hit O'Connor two plays in a row. O'Connor slow in getting up that time. 
Clock stops with the incomplete pass. 49 seconds remaining in the half. And it's third and long. Third and about 14 for the Red Raiders. Two receivers left, two to the right. Upshaw split far to the left. Chad Tolliver covering him on the far side. But it's a handoff to Maxey, who has room up the middle. He's at the 40, brought down at the 36 of McCauley for a first down. Clock stops as the chains move. Nice play call that time for Baylor. As the field was spread, but the give was to Maxey, who went at left tackle and picked up enough for the first down. 18 yards on that pickup for Baylor. Shotgun formation, O'Connor the only one in the backfield this time. And he does a quarterback draw, and he is stopped by Usman again as Baylor calls a timeout. Two-yard gain on the quarterback draw. Quick timeout for Baylor from head coach Phil Massey. So a lot of action at this point in the game. 26 seconds on the clock before halftime. McCauley trying to keep Baylor off the scoreboard before both teams go in at the break. Baylor's kicker, one of the best in the city is in terms of distance. His name is Rafael Gaglione. He's a junior, big boy. Not sure what his range is, but right now they're on the 34. So if they were kicking one at this point, it'd be a 51 yarder. But 26 seconds still on the clock. Plenty of time to improve his chances with a couple of plays here. Second down and eight for the Baylor offense. Upshaw, Reggie Upshaw, number seven, all the way across the field, lined up split left. Tolliver on him. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't try to go to him in this one-on-one -on -one matchup right now. Back to pass. Upshaw jammed on the line. Plenty of time for Connor, and it's picked off. Looks like it's picked off that time by 27. That is Andrew Busby. No uh, indication from the referees that it did hit the turf. So an interception for McCauley by Andrew Busby. Pass was thrown a little short of its intended receiver. And McCauley answers the turnover on the fumble on the last series with a interception of their own. 19 seconds left here. See if McCauley just chooses to kneel down and take this game in at halftime with a tie score. 19 seconds. Johnston in its shotgun with Tolliver to his right. Looks like they are going to try to run a play here. There's the snap. The give is to Tolliver, who's not had the success tonight that he's had the last two games going between the tackles. Baylor doing a nice job of keeping his gain at six seconds, so both teams will head into the locker room. This score is tied at 14, as both fans certainly have something to cheer about tonight. Everyone on their feet as the, as the players head into the locker room. Score tied at 14 at halftime. Well played game tonight. We've had our share of penalties, and we've had our share or well, we've only had one turnover for each team, but uh, both teams moving the ball on offense and coming up with some key stops on defense. Halftime score, 14 to 14. We're going to take a short break. We're going to leave the camera on so you can see the halftime festivities. We're going to take a short break, catch our breath, come back with a recap and some statistics. And we'll be right back.
Jeff Romero back with you here at halftime. As the Macaulay Pep Band performs on the field. <coughs> Excuse me. Quick recap of the scoring as our score is tied 14 all at the break. Macaulay scoring 14 points in the first quarter. Baylor answering with 14 of its own in the second quarter. Chad Tolliver scoring on two two-yard touchdown runs. The first coming at 8-12 of the first quarter. The extra point kick was missed. Tolliver reaching the end zone again from two yards out. 3-16 left in the first quarter. And the two-point conversion pass to Tolliver was good. McCauley leading 14 to nothing after one quarter. Quarter, Baylor getting on the board early in the second quarter at 10:59. On a Taylor Taylor Maxi 11-yard run, kick was good, and Baylor tied it up with 6:10 remaining in the second quarter. Jeffrey Bowens hauling in an 86-yard pass and run from quarterback Michael O'Connor. Bowens catching the ball near midfield and outrunning McCauley's defense to the end zone. Galliano's kick tying the score. At 14. McCauley really dominating on offense, but Baylor able to capitalize on a couple big plays to tie this game. Run through the statistics really quickly. First downs, Baylor 6, McCauley 16. Rushing yards, Baylor 36, McCauley 176. Passing yards, 170 for Baylor. 86 of those coming on the touchdown pass. McCauley passing yards, 45. Total offense, pretty even. 19 plays on 200, 206 yards for Baylor. 37 plays, 221 for McCauley. McCauley has fumbled once and Baylor has thrown one interception on the night. One punt for each team. Time of possession in McCauley's favor. 15 minutes for the Blue Tornado. And nine minutes for Baylor. Individual statistics rushing for Baylor, Maxey leading the way with 40 yards on six carries. O'Connor has lost four yards on four carries. All those, or a couple of those coming on sacks. McCauley's Alex Trotter nearing his first 100-yard game of the season with 92 yards on nine carries. Chad Tolliver been held in check by Baylor for the most part tonight, other than the short touchdown runs. Tolliver entering the game tonight, averaging 131 yards per game. And tonight, 43 yards on 12 carries for Chad Tolliver. Nelson Johnston doing a nice job running the option offense for McCauley. Samir Usman, 11 yards, three carries. Passing for Baylor, O'Connor, six for nine, 170 yards and the interception. Johnston, five for seven for 45 yards. McCauley did have a beautiful touchdown pass called back from Johnston to Spencer Morgan. Called back for holding, which would have given McCauley a 21 to seven, uh, to seven advantage. McCauley Band still on the field. Here at halftime. Macaulay School would like to send out a special welcome to our reunion classes from 1967, 1972, 1977, 1982, 1987, 1992, 1997, 2002 and 2007. Nearly 800 alumni and friends in town tonight to celebrate 
their individual reunions from the Macaulay School. We welcome them to town, and if you are listening at home but couldn't make it tonight, we hope you can make it next time. We do want to let you know there is a special Golden M reunion weekend for those alum alumni who have graduated who graduated 50 or more years ago. That, that event is going to take place, <coughs> excuse me, November 8th through 10th here in Chattanooga. Golden M reunion, the first time Macaulay has done done that, and we hope that a lot of alums take advantage of that. Trying to move the video camera here. I'm sorry. I'm not good at it. Travis is taking a break and trying to point it towards the video board so you can see. Yeah, sorry. Apologize for the video camera work that I was trying to do there. I was Point it back to the field. And let Travis handle his job when he gets back, and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Special hello tonight to the Atlanta Alumni Chapter. Watching the game tonight online at the home of Robert and Lindsey Sanders. Robert, a 1999 graduate of Macaulay. And we also have an alumni chapter in New York City watching the game tonight. I have the address, it's uh, Smithfield, West 28th Street in New York City. Hope there's a big gathering for alumni living in New York City tonight, join tonight's game. Score is tied 14-14 as we have about five or six minutes remaining in the halftime. Run through Macaulay's schedule really quick for you. Um, Macaulay will be at home again next weekend, next Friday night, hosting Battleground Academy, another division game for the Blue Tornadoes. 7.30 kickoff at Spears Stadium. Macaulay will take a break for fall break following that week and then back in action October 12th at Pope John, John Paul II in Nashville. Following that game, back in Nashville again, or in the Nashville area, excuse me, October 19th at Montgomery Bell Academy. Both those games are at 7 o'clock Central Time. We will not have we will not have those games on the broadcast for you. We only do the home games. And Macaulay rounding out its season October 26th hosting Brentwood Academy for the final home game of the year. Baylor, back in action next Friday night, hosting Brentwood Academy. Former team of Ralph Potter, who's Macaulay's head coach. Coached five years at Brentwood Academy before returning to Macaulay, the Macaulay sidelines this past year before the season. And then Baylor ends the year with three Road games, closes out the year three straight road games at Columbia Central, Columbia, Tennessee, at Pope John Paul II, and at Battleground Academy. Baylor three and two on the year, Macaulay two and two on the year. Macaulay trying to get over the 500 mark on the season. Moved to three and two on the year. Once again, thank you for joining us tonight. Jeff Romero along with Travis Uzzle, one of our boarding students here at Macaulay School, working the laptop and the camera. Doing a better job on the camera than I tried to do at halftime. I apologize for that. Trey Tucker, our sports information director, working the statistics to our left, and we are in the spacious press box here 
at Finley Stadium. And if you're just joining us, tonight's game being played at Finley Stadium here in downtown Chattanooga, not at home at Spears Stadium on the Macaulay campus. Macaulay chooses to play its home game against Baylor every other year downtown in the 20,000 seat stadium here at Finley here in downtown Chattanooga. On the south side, I can see the skyline as we are a lot higher up for this game than we normally are at Spears Stadium. I can see the skyline of Chattanooga. Beautiful night for football. As the Baylor team has come back onto the field, Macaulay yet to arrive for the second half. Baylor should get the second half kickoff as it deferred to the second half, winning the coin toss. As the PA announcer is thanking our game sponsors tonight, I will do the same as without their help, or with their help, we were able to, Macaulay School able to utilize the video board here at the stadium. And it's really enhanced the atmosphere for the game. And let's read those sponsors to you. It's Erlanger Health System, Great Clips, Holiday Inn at Hamilton Place, Midas on Market Street, Regions Bank, and Sam Edwards Jewelers. Huge thank you to our six game sponsors for tonight. Halftime score tied at 14. As McCauley took an early 14-0 lead in the first quarter with two short Chad Tolliver touchdown runs, both coming from two yards out. Baylor answered in the second quarter on an 11-yard run early in that period and an electrifying 86-yard pass from quarterback Michael O'Connor to receiver Jeffrey Bowens. This game has been everything we thought it would be. A lot of people talking about it, saying that it was a, a lot more evenly matched this year than in the last few years. And you can't get much closer than a 14-14 halftime tie. Macaulay students have been standing the whole game in the left corner of the bleachers in front of us here, supporting this team. Macaulay had a great uh, pep rally here uh, on campus uh, this afternoon with the middle school and the upper school students. But tonight it's all business for the football teams from Baylor and Macaulay. As this rivalry began in 1905, which was the same year that the Macaulay School was founded. Baylor team huddling at midfield. Macaulay still doing its stretches in in the west end zone. Finley Stadium holding 20,668, home of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. The Mocs playing in the Southern Conference host Appalachian State here tomorrow night for homecoming. Six o'clock kickoff for the Mocs against Appalachian State. Should be a good, uh, good crowd on hand for that game. It's supposed to be a beautiful evening for football and it's same tonight, beautiful night. 75 degrees at kickoff. Slight breeze, not affecting play at all. Just enough to keep people comfortable in the stands. And we should be set to go for the second half kickoff here 
momentarily. Thank you for joining us again tonight. Special welcome to all the alumni listening from far away. Glad you're with us tonight. We'll be back on the air next Friday night. Another home game for the Blue Tornado as Macaulay hosts Battleground Academy in another region game. That game at 7.30 Eastern time. We'll be on the air about 7.25. And both teams are on the sideline. Baylor receiving teams. Heading towards the east end zone. McCauley will kick off defending the west end zone. Deep for Baylor. 21, Mike Davis, 6, Landry Taylor. And Peter Phillips will do the kicking for Baylor. Teeing the ball up on the 40-yard line. And we're set to get underway here at Finley Stadium, second half. Score tied at 14. Here's the kick from Phillips. It's a short one. Taken at the 8-yard line by Taylor, returns it to his right side at the 30, still on his feet, finally brought down at the 32 yard line, met by three or four blue clad men from the McCauley team. So a good start field position wise for the Red Raiders as their last possession ended with an interception. Score tied at 14. Just underway here in the second half. Give is to Maxi. Tries the right side. Short gain of two. He's brought down by Cameron Walker. Looks like he picks up three yards. Three-yard gain for Maxi for Baylor. And Baylor comes to the line, second and seven. Shotgun snap. Maxi on the left side this time. Eric Wolf has a hold of him, but not before Maxi reaches about the 42. It's going to be close to a first down for Baylor. Nice job by Maxi keeping his feet moving and dragging people with him. And it is a first down, as indicated by the referee. First down for Baylor to open the second half. Ball at the 42. Just handed a note here. George Porter is wearing number five tonight instead of So we will get that corrected as looks like Houston Clements moving the pile there. 10 yard gain. Another, like another first down for Baylor, no. Nope. Let's see where they mark it. Nine or 10 yards, second down, so a gain of nine for Clements. As some tough running that time by Clements. So George Porter, 29 on our roster, but five in the game tonight. We, he is their leading rusher. And uh, we were not uh, notified of that, but he was this, the one that scored the first touchdown, not Maxie. That time the give was two, if the number's right, 33. That's Clements. And he loses a half a yard, maybe a yard. Third and a long one 
Third and one as Clements tries to hit the right tackle. And he's brought down by Cook and Nunley. Big third down play here for the Macaulay defense. O'Connor with a full house backfield. Gets the snap and the give. I don't think he got it. I don't think he got it. I didn't see who got the ball, but I don't think he got the first down. It was Clements as he was met by five or six blue shirts. He might have picked up a half a yard. Ball spotted at the, just across the 50 into Macaulay territory at the 49 of Macaulay and Baylor brings on the punting team. And junior punter Ian Jump. So, not a bad area for a fake punt here, but uh, it's fourth and one. Punt team on the field. Tolliver deep for McCauley, standing at his 20. And the snap is to the punter, and he does kick it. So no fake this time. Tolliver, fair catch, called for. Catches it on the run at the 18 of McCauley. Nice punt that time by Jump. Did not give Tolliver a chance to catch that on the run and return it for positive yardage. So McCauley's first possession of the second half. Clock sitting at 8.17. And Nelson Johnston, the signal caller for the Blue Tornado, back on the field. Done a nice job tonight of running this offense for the Blue Tornado. Tolliver to his right. Now Trotter in motion. Trotter's been the workhorse tonight. To give his two Tolliver on the left side. Nope. Flag on the play. There was a fumble, I think. Flag on the play. Referee's indicating the fumble it was a fumble on the play. And it was recovered by 57, Connor Williams. And now he's waving the, waving the flag off. So huge play that time. Huge swing in the game as Baylor recovers, recovers a fumble on the handoff from Johnston to Tolliver. And Baylor has the ball going in at the 15-yard line of McCauley. First and 10 at the 15. And let's see if Baylor can take advantage of this field position or if McCauley can hold. Now that Baylor fumbles the snap, was able to pick that up for no gain. But a fumble on the snap for O'Connor. So back-to-back -back fumbles, but Baylor falling on both of them. Second and 10, <coughs> Upshaw split wide to the right. O'Connor under center. Give is to Porter who has a nice hole on the right side and he is spinning around across the five close to the goal line. Gain of about 13 for Porter, first down for Baylor. Huge hole that time on the right side. Baylor looking good on this as the second second half gets underway here. 7.29 on the clock. First down for Baylor. Ball at the four. First and goal. There's some movement on the left side of the Baylor line. Should be a legal procedure on the offense, and it is. Baylor definitely has an experienced team. Played in the state finals, state championship game in the last two years, losing both games to Ensworth. O'Connor the give to Porter on the right side, and he's brought down by Busby after a three-yard gain. Baylor coaches asking for a horse collar flag, but nothing doing there. Gain of about three for Porter. Ball down to the five. Going to be second and goal from the five. Clements now in the backfield. Three backs behind O'Connor. Give us two Clements at the left side. He's looking for the end zone. He gets to the three yard line before he is wrestled down by Matthew Brock. 
Nice ankle tackle that time by the sophomore, Matthew Brock. Clements with a full head of steam at left tackle. Manages two yards. It's going to be third and goal from the three. Score tied at 14. Clock running 6-12. Here to go in the third quarter. We give this to Clements, who is in the end zone. Same play. This time he finds the end zone on the left side. Houston Clements from three yards out as Baylor takes the lead. Touchdown coming at 6.03 here in the third quarter. Extra point kick is tried and it is good. As Rafael Gaglione tacks on the point for Baylor, and Baylor leading 21 0. Oh, excuse me, 21 14 here in the third quarter. 21 14, Baylor leading. 6 0 3, third quarter. So the fumble comes back to haunt the Blue Tornado. Fumble inside the 20 yard line, and Baylor capitalizes on that by taking the lead, 21-14. Both teams have had the ball in the second half here. McCauley once, Baylor twice. Let's see if the offense can get something going here for the Blue Tornado. Strong performance by the offense in the first quarter and part of the second quarter. Fumble killed any momentum they had going into the half. And fortunately for McCauley, were, McCauley was able to pick off a Baylor pass late in the quarter before halftime. But the fumble here in the uh, beginning of the second, second half has led to seven points for Baylor and Baylor leading 21-14. As we're set for the kickoff. Another boomer back into the end zone. And it'll be no return for the Macaulay team as they will set up shop at the 20. Trailing for the first time tonight, 21-14. Six minutes, three seconds. Plenty of time left in this game. 21 to 14. Baylor leading. Johnston at quarterback. Offensive line, Cameron Walker, Judd Potter, Sam Devaney, Julian Nunley, and Casey Cook. On the line for the Blue Tornado tonight. Back to pass is Johnston. Pass is complete at the 30. I believe that is Morgan. Morgan right at the 30, right at the first down marker. Haven't indicated, no, there's the first down, so pass complete from Johnston to Morgan for a first down, 10 yards. Morgan and Johnston hooked up on a beautiful 44-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter, which was called back because of holding. It's time to give to Trotter around the left side. Nice block from Usman, he's got some room, he's at the 40. Close to another first down. And there's a flag on the play, after the play. Could be some unnecessary roughness type call on McCauley, who's called in that neighborhood. Tackle made by Will Thomas. Here's the call from the referee. Personal foul, oh, on Baylor. Second time we've seen that tonight, a personal foul after the play on Baylor. And McCauley will gladly take that 15-yard gift right there. So 10-yard run from for, for Trotter. And with the 15-yard penalty, the ball is all the way to the Baylor 44-yard line. First down and 10. Clock under six minutes to play in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 44 of Baylor. Give us to Tolliver. Nope. Usman, nope. And pass complete, excuse me. Pass complete to Hobbs. 
Nice eight yard route for Hobbs, the senior. Johnston to Hobbs, complete for an eight yard gain. The fake to Usman was so good that I thought he had the ball on the left side, but it was a quick, quick hitch to Hobbs for a gain of eight, second and two for the Blue Tornado. Option pitch to Trotter. This time he skips it to Trotter. So the last two pitches to Trotter have resulted in fumbles. This time Trotter able to fall on the ball. Loss of three that time as one of the Baylor defensive tackles was in pretty quickly on that play. Johnston had to make a quick decision and that pitch resulted in a dribbler, which Trotter was able to pick up off the artificial turf here at Finley Stadium. So third down, ball at the 39 of Baylor. Five yards to go for a first. Same play to the right side. Now he's back to pass, and he's going to be dropped. Sack for Baylor that time by Colton Jumper, all-city performer from his linebacker spot, gets the sack of Johnston, and he's knocked back for a nine, 10 yard loss. Punning situation here for Charlie Lindemann and the Macaulay Blue Tornado ball at the 49 of Baylor. Fourth and 15, and here comes the punt from Lindemann. It's high, and Baylor's gonna let it bounce at the 21, and comes backwards or takes a Baylor roll down at the 26. We're going to take a two-minute break. This is Macaulay Blue Tornado football. Back to the action here is the first play of Baylor's next series. Porter gets the handoff, going the right side. Picks up about four yards. It'll be second and six for Baylor, who seems to have the momentum here coming out after halftime, scoring after a McCauley fumble and leading the game 21-14 with 3.07 left here in the third quarter. Second and six. O'Connor in the shotgun. This time the option try, and he is wrestled down by Cameron Walker. Nothing doing there. We've seen tonight O'Connor not the fastest quarterback you'll ever see. Definitely has the arm, but struggles on the running plays. Trying to, trying to go option right, and was wrapped up by Walker before he could pitch the ball to Clements. Loss of about five. It's going to be third and ten for Baylor. Third and ten. Receivers, two receivers to both sides. Back to pass. Is O'Connor has a lot of time and complete to oh intended for Upshaw. A little too high in his hands, but too high for Upshaw to catch that one. And Upshaw yet to catch a pass tonight. 
So that third down pass play incomplete and McCauley should get field, good field position out of this. With Jump standing at his 12 yard line, Tolliver at the 40, McCauley 40. Here's the punt, left footed punt. Nice high kick. Tolliver lets it bounce and takes a McCauley roll toward midfield and will be downed at the 46 of McCauley. So finally some good field position for the Blue Tornado after its last four or five series starting deep in, in their own territory. First and 10, 2.06 left in the third quarter. And here we go, first and 10 from the 46. Johnston at shotgun. Keeps on the option. Had trotted to his right, but chose to keep and was brought down quickly by Blake Lane. As we said, Baylor with nine seniors on the defensive starting lineup. McCauley, nine seniors all told tonight for this season. So Baylor with the experience, especially on defense. Second and 10. Back to pass is Johnston. He's got Wide open is Morgan, who catches it on the run at the 30. Beautiful pass from Johnston to Morgan, who hooked up on a touchdown in the second quarter, but was called back by Holdings. And this is a big gain for the Blue Tornado. It's going to be for 38 yards. Ball all the way down to the Baylor 15-yard line. Just a simple go, right, go route. Morgan got behind his defender. Johnson did a great job of putting that ball right on the money. So first and 10 from the 15 for McCauley. Trotter on the give to the right side at the 10. Nice pickup of about five yards. As that play has been pretty successful for McCauley tonight. Trotter in motion and gets the, gets the handoff from Johnston. Going to the right side, pick up, picks up five yards. Tackle made by Blake Lane. Collie on the move, second and five. Actually second and four, pickup of six for Trotter that time. Back to pass is Johnston and his pass is complete to Eric Wolf from the slot. And it's a touchdown McCauley. Touchdown for McCauley. The McCauley fans have been silent for quite a while, but now they have something to cheer about. And Peter Phillips' kick can tie the game with 32 seconds here left in the third quarter. So McCauley on the scoreboard for the first time since the first quarter, and that kick is blocked. That could be a game-saving block right there as number six came untouched, Landry Taylor from the left side, block that kick. So Baylor remains in front by one point, 21 to 20. Still 32 seconds left here in the third quarter. So Wolf has his second touchdown catch of the night. That was a, how long was that touchdown? Six, 10 yard pass play from Johnston to Wolf. But the point after is blocked, and McCauley finds itself trailing by one. McCauley set to kick off after the touchdown. Johnston finding Eric Wolf on the crossing route. Good for a 10-yard touchdown pass. And the kick is going to go to the six-yard line. There's a seam. He's across the 30, brought down at the 33. Mike Davis on the return, brought down for McCauley by Tanner Green.
The touchdown pass was Johnston's second on the year. Both of them coming to Eric Wolf. The, the duo hooked up in the win over Tyner two weeks ago. First and 10 at the 33 for Baylor. Give to Porter, who's got a hole on the right side. He's got 10 yards, 11, 15, 20. Finally drug out of bounds by Morgan. Nice pickup, nice hole on the right side for Porter. A little stretch play that found a seam and gets up 21 yards for Porter and his Baylor offense. 17 seconds on the clock as he went out of bounds, so the clock stops. Baylor ahead by one here. Porter is about to uh, click down to zero. 17 seconds left. First down. Gives to Porter again. He skips to the left. Picks up about two before he is knocked down by Cameron Walker. Not sure why Porter's wearing a different number tonight, but would have been nice to know that before the game. But uh, Porter wearing five. I had him coming into the game, the roster that we received, as number 29. But he's wearing five tonight. One of the top rushers in Chattanooga. And there's the... Zeros indicating the third quarter has come to an end and the fourth quarter will get underway shortly. Be a 90 second timeout for the TV production crew is, I don't think anybody's left their seats here tonight and the renewal of this rivalry, Baylor and McCauley. Baylor leading 21 to 20. Fourth quarter about to get underway, 21-20, Baylor leading. McCauley scoring on its last series but the kick blocked by Landry Taylor. Extra point kick was blocked. And Baylor on the move again. Facing a second and seven when play resumes. Michael O'Connor gone the whole way at quarterback for Baylor. We have not seen the sophomore Nick Tiano. From what we what we understand, both quarterbacks have played or have seen action in, in all five games for Baylor to this point. O'Connor, the junior from Canada, boarding student from Canada, has gone the whole way tonight and has an impressive arm. Baylor with 170 passing yards tonight. McCauley with 112. McCauley leading in the rushing category, 175 yards to 99. And the yards, total yards about even. McCauley with a 287 to 269 edge. Here's the first play of the third quarter. And it's Porter, and he is slung around, still not down, as Morgan Spun him around and Porter would not go down. Nice battle there for those two. Morgan held on just long enough for a teammate to come and help, but after a two yard gain, it's gonna be third and five for the Red Raiders. Maybe a long four. Third and a long four. Ball at the 40. Single back behind O'Connor is Porter. And the give is to Porter around the right side. And he is across the, it's gonna be close. He is, looked like he was gonna get a, gonna get a little farther than he did and uh, brought down near the McCauley sideline. It's gonna be close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like it's right at the marker or maybe just past it. My guess is it is a first down. Well, no, it's gonna be fourth down, so. A three-yard gain for Porter, fourth and a half a yard. Big play for the McCauley defense here. Fourth and a half a yard with O'Connor's 6-6 six, six height advantage. I wonder if he's going to do a quarterback sneak here. Half a yard to go, but now they're going to measure. So the officials, uh, Massey across the way, wants a measurement. We'll, we'll get to see how close, how close it is to being a first down. 
We might get to look at the video board and see if they, you know, they're not going to show it. They're showing the, uh, there, there we go. Let's see if we can see from here, from the video board as well. He's going to say it's about a foot short. So he shows both sidelines that the ball is about a foot short. Massey calling the play. Bowens bringing the play in from the sidelines. Bowens with an 86-yard touchdown reception already tonight. Reggie Upshaw, the All-State receiver, yet to catch a ball in the game tonight. He is wide to the left, most likely a decoy on this play. Fourth and a foot. And here we go, fourth down shotgun formation for O'Connor. And timeout called for by Baylor. So I would say that's a break for McCauley as Looked like the defensive line was not in the, the alignment that the defensive coaches were hoping for. So a timeout called for by Baylor. I have to give some credit to a lot of the Macaulay moms who were down here this morning and put up banners all around the stadium. So it's, Student body made banners the last two nights for showing support for the football team. And uh, a lot of them have come down as a lot of the uh, brothers and sisters of players from both teams are playing on the hill to our right. And I'm sure that's why some of the banners have fallen down. But uh, a lot of work by a lot of people to make this game special for, for both sides tonight. And if you're not able to join us here in person, we hope that uh, – in two years, when McCauley brings the game back to Finley Stadium, you can join us. Great football, great sportsmanship, and a great game to this point. Baylor leading by one, 11 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the game. Now O'Connor is under center with a back behind him, and he's going to do a quarterback sneak. It looked like they left early to me. No. Nope. Well, they got it. They got the first down. It looked like the line moved a little early before the snap, but uh, just a little surge. Picks up the first down for Baylor on the quarterback sneak from uh, O'Connor. So Baylor retains possession on the fourth and short play. And um, first down for Baylor at the 35. I'm going to guess they're going to Take a, take a shot at the end zone here. Leading by one. Just a minute into the fourth quarter. Upshaw on the far left, covered by Tolliver. And O'Connor under center. Looks like he's changing the play now, no? Looks like some movement to hand off. His to Porter, who has met in the backfield. They should have done what I suggested, but Nunley, Julian Nunley, met Porter as he tried the left, left tackle. And Nunley beat his block. For a loss of four, ball all the way back to the 39 of McCauley. So loss of four for Porter. Second down, 14. It's Tom O'Connor in the shotgun. Brock and Tolliver covering two receivers to the right side. This time O'Connor quarterback draw up the middle. Picks up about seven. Tall, lanky runner, had a hole. He's brought down by Eric Wolf, And he was able to get uh, about, about eight yards. It's going to be third and, third and seven. Third and seven for Baylor. And they are right in that 50-yard field goal range right here. Oh, shotgun formation for O'Connor with Porter to his left. Two receivers to either side. And he's back to pass. And he lofts it up on the left side. He's got a man open, and it is caught. Caught at inside the five. That is Chandler Gauger. Nice sliding catch inside the five-yard line. As I'm not sure if it was Spencer Morgan over there on the coverage, but he couldn't get there quick enough. So first down, pick up for... Baylor, and they are knocking on the door at the three-yard line. 28-yard 
excuse me, 28 yards on that pass play. Full house backfield. The give is to Clements, and he picks up about a yard, maybe two. And looks like they're just going to try to pound it in here. Clock running at 9-10, remaining in the game. McCauley bringing in a pair of fresh legs. Jack Harris replacing Kirsch Duncombe on the defensive line. Ball at the one, so pickup of two for Clements. And O'Connor able to pick up some key first downs for the Red Raiders in the second half. And this time he sneaks it in. O'Connor sneaks it in from the one. And Baylor extends its margin to 27 to 20 with the extra point attempt coming. So 8.45 on the clock. 8.45 remaining in the game. Here is the kick from Gaglione. And it is good. So with 8.45 remaining, 20. O'Connor scoring from one yard out. And Baylor leading 28 to 20. 8.45 to play here in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time left in this game. Collie hoping it can uh, score and tie the game with a two-point conversion. Once again, thanks for joining us tonight. Jeff Romero along with Travis Uzzel. Statistics provided by Trey Tucker and John Green to our left tonight. Hope you are enjoying the broadcast. McCauley finds itself down by 8, 28-20. Baylor looking to extend the win streak in this series to five games. Leading right now by eight. Here's the kickoff after the score. This one might not, well, it is gonna make the end zone, so that is unreturnable. Nice weapon to have for a team who can, if they can kick the ball into the end zone each time on a kickoff. McCauley had that last year with Arturo Rocha. He kicked the ball into the end zone, I would say, 19 out of 20 times. Peter Phillips, not quite the leg that Rocha has, but Gaglione for Baylor has done the job just about every kickoff tonight. First and 10 from the 20. Let's see what McCauley can do on offense. Johnston at quarterback in the shotgun. And he pulls it out. And on the keeper on the right side, has first down yardage across the 30. Nice fake that time before he is brought down after 11, an 11 yard gain by Mike Davis. Davis has been busy tonight from his safety position. Done a good job of coming up on the running plays and making the tackle. 11-yard gain for Johnston. Done a great job of running the offense tonight with a few errant pitches that haven't gone his way, but otherwise a great night for Johnston, junior quarterback. Back to pass this time, looking for Morgan. Now he's scrambling to his left, looking for a block. He's gonna have to eat it. Gonna have to eat it here as uh, Morgan, looking in Morgan's direction, and he was covered pretty nicely there. So loss of one or two for Johnston on that play. Second and 12. Johnston takes the sack. As again, there's about eight to 9,000 people here tonight. Don't have an official number. A lot of kids in the far, above the far end zone. Second and 12 for McCauley. Back to pass again is Johnson. Has a lot of time looking for, looking for, that is Hobbs across the middle and the ball was in and out of the hands of Davis who could not handle that pass, which would have uh, given Baylor a great field position with that interception, but. That 
pass not finding the mark that time from Johnston to Hobbs. Baylor's done a number on Chad Tolliver tonight. Tolliver hasn't gotten as many carries as he has in the previous games. But um, his rushing total probably around the 40, 50 yard mark tonight. Back to pass again is Johnston. Quick screen to the other side. And that was not going anywhere as Tolliver was in position to catch the ball. You better watch it. He just headbutted somebody. Uh, that ball from Johnston, a quick screen as he looked one way and threw back to the other way, was incomplete. So Charlie Lindemann into punt for McCauley as McCauley faces a fourth and 12 with 7.23 on the clock. Nobody back for Baylor. The punt, high punt, it's gonna take a McCauley roll over the 40 and dies at the 38 yard line of Baylor. So Baylor in command at this point in the game. 7-11, left on the clock, plenty of time left for McCauley to tie this one up here, trailing by eight. McCauley students still on their feet as they have been the whole game. And Baylor takes over first and 10 at the 38 yard line. O'Connor at quarterback under center. Give to Porter. Nope, that's Clements as he slips a tackle. Walker had him by the ankle in the backfield, but Clements able to pick up a yard there. Hard running by Clements. And I imagine we're going to see a heavy dose of George Porter and Houston Clements here as long as Baylor has the ball to try to run some of this clock down here. Clemens the only back in the backfield, two receivers. And seven men on the line, give two Clemens on the left side. And this time he is taken down for a loss. Nice tackle by Eric Wolf and Jack Harris. Harris, I mean Clemens met immediately by Harris and Wolf that time. Clock running, 6-14 six, six, left in the game. Big third down play here for both teams. Third and nine. McCauley needing to stop. Baylor needing to first down. Baylor sends two receivers to either side. And O'Connor able to find an open receiver for much of the second half. Third down and nine. Back to pass is O'Connor. And it's complete to Bowens as he leaps in front of Winters, or excuse me, Morgan, for the catch. 18-yard completion from O'Connor to Bowens. Nice connection there as they have hooked up several times on the evening. Big, big first down pickup for Baylor. Now they are across the 50 and at the 44 of McCauley. Clock running 5.37. Left to play, McCauley needing to turn over here or stop. Connor in the shotgun. High snap, give to Clements. Oh, he's a keeper. Keeper, and he picks up about seven yards. Hand off to Clements. I mean, excuse me, fake to Clements. O'Connor keeps on the left side. And he gets uh, positive yards, about an eight yard pickup that time. O'Connor six, listed at 6'6". Six, six. We're gonna call it seven yards on the on the pickup. Second and long three. And and oh, the fumble on the play. Handoff was to Porter. There is a flag on the play. Handoff stretch play to the left to Porter. He never had the ball. Signal is McCauley's ball. I would think the penalty is going to be on Baylor unless McCauley jumped this. Holding on Baylor, so that'll be declined. And Baylor has some life here with 444 left in the game. 444 to go. McCauley's ball down by eight. Let's see who, see who recovered that fumble. Well, 
Ball will be at the 39 of McCauley. And Tanner Winters is going to get credit with that fumble recovery for McCauley. First and 10 now, McCauley ball. Give to Trotter at the left side. He's got some running room, and he's in the open. Stays on his feet across the 50. If he would have stayed on his feet, I think he was gone. He got tripped up at the 49-yard line, put his hand down to catch his balance. If he would have stayed on his feet, I think he was gone. Nice pickup of 16 yards for Trotter who's got to be near 100 yards, if not over 100 yards for the night. Simple give to the left side when he was in motion and picked up a good 16 yards for Trotter. First down into Baylor territory now. Johnson on the keeper, and he's got some running room. He's across the 40. And he's dragging defenders for a nine-yard gain. Finally brought down by Bryce Reynolds. Hard running by Nelson Johnston. As this McCauley offense has found some energy and some life and this is what they were doing in the first quarter moving the ball on good seven eight yard chunks three fifty two left in the game second and one back to pass is Johnston and he has somebody open that's Morgan oh nice play that time on the defending Landry Taylor as Johnston threw into double coverage. Nice effort by Morgan. Ball was on the money, but knocked down by the two, two Baylor defenders there. Not a, bad, not a bad idea on a third and short there. Nice call. Nice call on that play. Third and, and one, and with the clock running and McCauley trailing, they can Think about taking two plays here to get the first down. So third and one, give to Tolliver. And he stood up at the line. He was close to the first down. He was hit hard and dropped back by about six guys, but not before he reached near the 35. And that's what he's got to get to for the first down. But good spot as his forward progress got him to the, it's about a foot short of the 35 yard line. A timeout taken for McCauley as they think about this fourth down and a foot to go for the first down. With 3.22 to go. And trailing by eight points here in the fourth quarter. McCauley needing a foot to retain possession here. And that'll certainly make things interesting if they pick up this first down. Great crowd still on hand. Regions Bay. And Sam Edwards Jewelers. Thank you for your continued support. Beautiful, beautiful facility here for downtown Chattanooga. As we said earlier, Finley Stadium was the home to the NCAA 1AA and now the FCS National Championship game from 1997 to 2009, 12-year run in a national championship facility for Chattanooga, occasionally hosting high school football games. Big play here in the game is McCauley facing a fourth and a foot. Quarterback sneak for Johnston, and he has the first down as he's pushed back by Baylor. But he not before he crossed the 35-yard line. No flags on the play, so a first down for McCauley. McCauley on the move, 317. Left to play. Head coach Ralph Potter trying to work some magic here in the late, late minutes of the game. Give to Trotter on the left side, and he is upended on a nice play by Davis, who clipped his feet and sent Trotter flying, but not, at, not until an eight-yard gain, seven-yard gain. PA says it was Usman, but it was Trotter on the carry. Pickup of seven 
Second and three for McCauley. Johnston on the keeper this time, on the option keeper, and he is at the 25. He's going to be one yard short of the first down. Clock moving close to 2.30 remaining in the game. Third down and one as the play brought in by Eric Wolf from the sideline. Potter telling the offense or urging the offense to hurry up. 2.19, 2.17 now on the clock. Third and one as Tolliver finds a hole for the first down, and he's across the 20. Ball comes loose, but he was already down, so no fumble. First down for McCauley. Clock stops with the moving of the chains there. Pickup of six for Tolliver. And McCauley ready to go. No huddle for McCauley. First down, ball inside the 20. Pitch to fumble on the play. I think Johnston was able to get it back. Yes, Johnston was able to get it back as the defensive line was in his face. And I think they actually tipped the ball on the pitch, but he was able to muscle it away from somebody on the Baylor line there. So a loss of three as McCauley does huddle and catch his breath. 137 now on the clock. So McCauley looking for a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie this game. Ralph Potter urging them to get going. Back to pass is Johnston. He's got Morgan wide open. There it is, the pass, and it's a touchdown. Beautiful strike from Johnston to Morgan as they have tried several times to hook up in the end zone. One called back by a penalty. The other one knocked down. Third time is a charm. As that pass play goes for 22 yards, Johnston to Morgan, 124 on the clock. And this could be the game right here. McCauley has to go for two to tie the game. 28-26, 124 left on the clock. McCauley sends out Hobbs to the right, Morgan to the left. Trotter, now this timeout for McCauley. Trotter was out to the right and Tolliver behind. Potter calls a timeout. And I don't think either team has any timeouts left. So McCauley scores with 124 remaining in the game and is desperately needing a two-point conversion to tie this game. Still plenty of time for Baylor to do something when they get the ball. But right now, McCauley looking to push the score to 28 and tie this game. And I have seen my first morph suit this season. Morph suit, one of those skin tight, all body covering suits. And my friend Hunter Adams is wearing one in the stands. And it's first time I've seen that this year is the blue morph suit by uh, Hunter Adams, a sixth grader at Macaulay. And here we go. McCauley, now whistle blows again. Now Baylor calls a timeout. I think that's all the timeouts for both teams. So Baylor wanted to see what McCauley was going to line up in, and that gives Ralph Potter and the offense, offensive coaching staff a chance to uh, rethink this play. You give it to Tolliver, who's had so much success this season going between the tackles, but hasn't found much success tonight. We try a screen pass, maybe to Usman. Or do you let Trotter go around the end on a quick handoff? Let's see what the coaching staff has in mind here. 124 to go. Baylor 28, McCauley 26. And everybody on their feet, both sides, everybody on their feet. Well, I see about 10 people below me not on their feet. Now they are. Now they are. And here we go. McCauley trying to reach the end zone for a two-point conversion to tie this game. 
Morgan to the left and Hobbs to the right. Now Johnson calls a timeout, so McCauley did have one more timeout left. Chess match going on here between the two coaching staffs. <laughs> this is fun. This is going to be this is fun right now as this extra point try has taken probably about five minutes <laughs> as McCauley's called two timeouts and Baylor has called one timeout. I also see a guy with a blue Smurf wig in front of us. A lot of school spirit on both sides of the ball tonight. A lot of blue painted faces and bodies on the McCauley side. And a lot of red on the opposite side tonight. So a 22 yard touchdown pass from Nelson Johnston, his second touchdown pass of the night. This one going to Morgan. And now McCauley desperately needing a two point conversion to tie this game. And here we go, Trotter in motion. And the give is to Tolliver who spun around and was right at the goal line. That, oh boy. The referees could not make up their mind. One was signaling no, the other one had no idea. It was really close, really close. He spun around. I don't know if he got the ball across from where we're sitting. They're showing the replay on the board. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But uh, anyway, a great stop by Baylor. So Baylor remains in the lead by two, 28-26, 124 to go. And we do have replay capability on the video board tonight, but that doesn't mean the referees are going to change their mind. It was close. He was hit and spun and tried to reach for the goal line, but he did not get it across. So Baylor stops the two-point conversion try. 124 to go. And after all those timeouts, no points for McCauley. And Baylor remains in the lead, 28-26. This game has had all the makings of the classic rivalry that it is. So Baylor anticipating an onside kick here as McCauley needs the ball back for a shot. And McCauley certainly lining up on the kickoff team in onside formation. Whistle blows. As I don't think the ref were up, Baylor called a time. I don't know how many timeouts the board <laughs> has said zero for several in the last time. I'm not going to say they didn't have any because I don't know officially, but uh, I know for, I know it's at least their third time. And I know McCauley's court has called three this half, so that should be it for both teams in terms of timeouts. So McCauley setting up for an onside kick, and Baylor setting up to cover an onside kick. Anything can happen on these plays here. One crazy bounce, and you never know where the ball is going to end up. Actually, the uh, scoreboard says three timeouts remaining for both teams. So either they didn't take it off the scoreboard, or they just or giving both teams three timeouts, but I, I, I'm pretty sure neither team has any timeouts remaining. And if Baylor gets the ball, they're just gonna run out the clock. So here is the onside kick from Phillips, and it's recovered across the 50 by number 19. That's Chandler Gauger, who's had a great game tonight for Baylor. Nice job by Gauger to corral that kick it only bounced once. I think McCauley and Phillips were hoping for a high bounce so some of the skill players could jump up and knock it loose or try to grab it. But with 124 left, it looks like Baylor's going to extend its winning streak in the series to five games as they lead by two, 28-26. And there's the first kneel down.
So it'll be second down. With a minute and five seconds to go in the game. Well played game, a little bit of everything in this game. Hard hitting. Some strategy involved and I'll tell you that block blocked extra point kick is proving to be the difference tonight. As Landry Taylor blocking an extra point on McCauley's third touchdown of the night. Forty seconds, clock running. Third down after the second kneel down. And we'll stick around for a few minutes to try to give you some final statistics. Clock running 20 seconds now as Baylor is going to hang on for a 28 to 26 victory. Michael O'Connor, the quarterback from Canada, hands the ball to the referee and eight, seven, six seconds as both teams head to the center of the field. Baylor obviously celebrating, celebrating. The victory, McCauley, somber as it crosses the field, but a well-played game by both teams. And there's the final, 28-26 Baylor, with a two-point victory over McCauley. We thought coming in an evenly matched game for both teams. The difference being a, a actually three extra missed extra points for McCauley. One a blocked kick. So Baylor hangs on for the 28 to 26 victory in a classic game tonight. Baylor moving to four and two on the season and in uh, evening. It's division record to two and two. McCauley falling to two and three overall and one and two in the division. Next up for McCauley, a home date with Battleground Academy next Friday night at 7.30, and that'll be our, our next broadcast. Handshakes still taking place on the field. We'll run through some quick statistics for you. As the second half included two touchdowns by both teams. Relatively even. Like I said, the difference was three missed extra points for McCauley. Run through the scoring quickly for you. McCauley enjoyed a 14-0 lead after one quarter as Chad Tolliver scored twice from two yards out. Chad Tolliver with two two-yard touchdown runs in the fourth quarter. One of the kicks was missed. However, McCauley scored on a two-point conversion to make it 14-0. And McCauley was on the move and looking very impressive. Baylor answers in the second quarter with an 11-yard touchdown run by George Porter early in the second quarter and ties the game on an 86-yard touchdown pass from O'Connor to Bowens. Bowens having a big game tonight for Baylor. So halftime score 14 all. Baylor responds quickly in the third quarter with a three-yard touchdown run by Houston Clement. And the kick made it 21-14. Eric Wolf scores on a 10-yard pass from Nelson Johnston for McCauley. That, was the, that point after was blocked by Baylor, and McCauley found itself trailing by one with that. O'Connor scores on a one-yard run in the fourth quarter, and that kick made it, makes it 28-20. Baylor leading 28-20 in the fourth quarter. McCauley scores with 124 remaining spent from Nelson Johnston to Spencer Morgan from 22 yards out. After three timeouts, McCauley tries to tie the game with a two-point conversion try, and Chad Tolliver is stopped at the goal line by the Baylor defense. And an onside kick try 
The onside kick try by McCauley was recovered by Baylor, and they run out the clock to end the game and continue the winning streak in the series as Baylor holds on for a 28-26 victory tonight here at Finley Stadium. This broadcast tonight is made possible through the technology of Play On Sports, the TSSAA Network, and Macaulay School. By clicking on the link on Macaulay.org, fans can not only listen to the home football games but watch live stream video as well. Our next broadcast is next Friday night at home against Battleground Academy in another region matchup. Kickoff is set for 7.30 Eastern time, and we will be on the air at about 7.25 p.m. We hope you tune in to then as well. Thank you for listening to all our alumni across the nation. For those of you who had gatherings with other alums, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Special thanks tonight to producer Travis Uzzle and Macaulay Sports Information Director Trey Tucker for making this broadcast possible. Until next time, thank you and good night from Macaulay School.